Welcome to U.S. City 360, I'm Ginger Chang. Today we go back to Haiti to see the progress of city's Moringa tree planting project. After the 2010 earthquake leveled Haiti and affected almost 3.5 million people, it was city's belief that providing assistance was not only to help those in need, but that the aid would be inexpensive, sustainable, and immediately effective. Thus, after extensive research, our volunteers discovered the best tool was to cultivate the Moringa tree nurseries. Through the Moringa project, Tiji believes it can resolve three key national issues, poverty, malnutrition, and deforestation. Now, a year later, our volunteers were very happy to see that not only Tsiji's Moringa nurseries have grown more in abundance, but more people wanted to grow Moringa as well. We now take you to Tsiji's Moringa Great Love Farm in Sealbird and Cite Soleil in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. As a matter of fact, in the three years after the Haiti earthquake, we saw many problems in Haiti. The three main problems are, first, deforestation. Only 2% of the forest is still remaining. Secondly, most people suffer from malnutrition because they couldn't afford enough food. Lastly, poverty is widespread. So we hope to use a very sustainable and eco-friendly agriculture method. Sichi started Moringa tree planting officially in September of 2010 near the Hibbert Moringa farm near Port-au-Prince. We were able to start a mid-sized Moringa powder manufacturing factory. I planted this tree about half a year ago in last September. Now it's March. It's been almost six months and it's very tall now. Just in over half a month, it's grown to be taller than I am. If you cut this and eat it, it tastes like asparagus. Uh, asparagus, When this is dried, you can take the seeds inside. Um, this Great Love Farm has been established for more than a year. Now we are starting small-scale production of Moringa leaves. We also finished work on the studio. Now they will start the drying process on the harvested Moringa leaves. When they are dry, they will be ground into a powder. We hope the next time we visit, they can tell us how much their harvest weighs and how much powder they can make out of those, then it will be more professional. The Moringa Tree Project in Haiti is supported by many international NGOs. The ICDF in Haiti heard about the fast-growing Moringa tree and how it can provide sufficient nutrients for Haitians. So they bought 3,000 baby Moringa trees from Tsuji's Great Love Farm 11 months ago. That was the first revenue earned by Great Love Farm. This one was planted last April, so it's about 11 months old. Now it's grown three times my height, so it's nearly six meters high. You can imagine how, in a year, the Moringa tree can grow to be this tall, and most of them have bloomed and produced fruits. We talked to local farmers, thanks to Brother Jia Zim, who arranged an introductory workshop to them. We had more than 150 farmers who were very interested to learn about the Moringa. We told them the benefits and farming methods of planting Moringa. We taught them how to harvest it and how to make Moringa leaves into powder and Moringa oil. They were very interested. 
And it's very easy to grow. Doesn't require much water. So we hope that through ICDF's help, we can guide them in planting some moringa trees. Uh, shrubs. 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 Uh, shrubs.
The Tree for Life journal notes that having the Moringa tree is like growing multivitamins at your doorstep. Repopulating Haiti with more greenery is very critical to the country's recovery, since studies have clearly identified deforestation as one of the root causes of poverty. Even before the January 2010 earthquake, the UN reports that due to long history of unsustainable land use, deforestation has left the nation with less than 2% of Haiti covered with forest. However, seeing that reforesting can raise the country's standard of living, the Martelli administration plans to double forest cover by 2016 by planting 50 million trees a year. More forests can also be natural barriers for Haiti from natural disasters such as hurricanes. During this trip, city volunteers learned that one of the worst hit areas from Hurricane Sandy was Cap Haitian. So we now go there and see how the road to recovery has been for the community there. His name is Mark Henry. He is pretty young. This time that we are in Cap Haitian, he invited us to stay at his place. The development in Haiti's coastal areas is challenging, so he let us use his living room as our temporary office. I made the idea from Brother Leslie doing in my visit at Port-au-Prince. We say it's a good initiative. It's so very important to promote it in Cap Haitians. So that's why I decided to join them so we can work together and to make this world a better place to live. The specialty of this area is that we have a lot of men. They are young and most of them have a professional background. So we hope that the volunteer movement here in Cap Haitian will get better and better. I finished to put a group of young people together to start the, the sushi in Capetians. Last year, Hurricane Sandy inflicted huge damages on Haiti, and in northern Haiti, Cap Haitian is the second largest city. We can say, unfortunately, this um, natural disaster happened. The most needed uh, area affected by the, the Irrigan was the Petitus area. This is a poor area. Suji's documentation team allows us to know the local situations through their photographic journal. Uh, Bring a camera and go to encourage the people to leave the, the, the risky area. We went to, an, to another uh, street where we saw two little kids they died on the floor. So man, that was touching hard to see two little kids down on the floor just because they drowning. And their family, their family was crying. You know, they put, they didn't know what to do. That can touch her very much. And Brother Patrick see it is the opportunity to come in to help the victim at Providence. So we decided to do a distribution for 250 families. We gave each household 20 kilograms of rice, some noodles, and cooking oil. And then we start the distribution. We provide them food um, with love and respect. I was surprised to be there because this is my first time um, working with the, with the foundation and everything happened so, so well. It's the first good impressions we do in the pretty tense community. It, they say that this is the first time in their life they receive a gift from a foreigner with love and respect. We then started long-term care for this community. At this time, I mobilized the, the 52 active volunteers to take part in the home visit. Like we saw an old woman, he has uh, uh, a leg problem, he could not walk, 
and he lived in a little house. The condition was very, very, very bad. So that pushed me a lot. And I was saying, man, we got to find a solution. We, we got to find a way to help those people who they were really, really, really in need. Okay, because we could see how dedicated they are. The families here in Cap Haitian are very impoverished. We do our best to help them. We visited a school nearby. The school couldn't afford the salary for their staff and lost their principal too. So the person in charge of the school hired his own son, who was 22 years old. He didn't even graduate college. We could tell that to improve the level of education here in Haiti, we have a lot of work to do. This is the Spring Blessing Ceremony. This ceremony, it's a very, very successful ceremony. More than 250 people took part to express his own gratitude to Sushi. They decided to come just because they see how we used to do things. And so they say, oh man, I gotta be there. I gotta be there because it's the Sushi Foundation, so I gotta be there. We are from Sushi. Numen se Sushi. Numen se Sushi. 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 In Chinese culture, we will celebrate the coming of spring. Because spring also symbolizes hope. And when they live in, they learn a lot about how to be polite, the love and sharing, honesty, um, sincerity, integrity. So you can imagine, you can feel that they was like sitting down and feel, feel of the spirit. So they decide to stay with us. Because if today, the mission is on the ground, it's because of 30 people. And 30 people, Yo gen bon pense nan tèt yo, yo gen bon parole nan bouche yo pou y ap refè bon bagay. Parce que malgré nou men, nou nan nécessité pa nou et kon sa pou nou kapab prouve moun ki pi mal pase nou. Est-ce que pa gen moun kon sa la matin an? Nou ta de sire men ki tèt ansanm, nou men pa do yo si nan yo kap pou nou fòme yon gou kon sa pou pou nou kapab ebe lòt peyi yo. Pi de fòme yon grou so this is a special gift from Master Chen Yen. We introduced them to our bamboo bank to show them how Zerji started in the difficult days back then. And we organized a spontaneous bamboo bank to see all is their generosity to contribute in the in this ceremony for the first bamboo bank. Four, four hundred. 41, gold, 50 cents, 10 dollars. I hope one day everybody can join together and live with love. I poise to help others, and I show that by those things, this world can be a better place to live. Now the community know all of the volunteers, all the sushi's volunteers, and would like to work and work together with the sushi's missions. It is my honor to present this great uniform to my friends. I'm so very happy to receive the new shirt, new t-shirt from Sushi's. I'm going to work to help more volunteers, more members to join this movement. We are hoping in the future, maybe we will start something like the Zerchi USA and spread Zerchi's spirit far and wide. This is 
Yeah, this is a volunteer team with great potential. We even joked that in a few years, you will do even better than Port-au-Prince's volunteers. This is a competition for good. In the next segment, we turn our attention back to Port-au-Prince. Two weeks earlier, we brought you the grand opening of College Marianne and Christ the King Secretarial School, which has become the beacon of hope for Haiti. Prior to Tsiji reconstructing the schools, the Haitian Ministry of Education estimates that the January 2010 earthquake had affected 23% of all schools in Haiti. Almost 4,000 of them were closed after the quake, and College Marianne and Christ the King Secretarial School were among them as well. College Marianne and Christ the King Secretarial School are the first structures erected after the earthquake. This is not only a milestone in Haiti's post-quake road to recovery, but for Tsiji's humanitarian efforts in Haiti as well. It is also during the monumental celebration where we discovered another rare wonder. During the construction period of College Marion in December 2012, Mr. Young, the project manager, felt that something was still missing at the school. He found his answer when he returned to Taiwan, the seat of a lotus flower. He built a pond on the school campus as a home for the lotus flowers. Students will be very happy to see this pond. This pond is like an environmentally friendly pond. We can watch it when there are some lotuses. If we put some fish over there, students would love to see it too. Then after 16 months, the day right before the grand opening of College Marion, a miracle happened. I just got off the bus and Mr. Yang came by and told me, hey, don't lotus flowers take two years to bloom? But how come it blossom today? It's unbelievable. Lotuses are a special flower that can grow from dirt without any soil. It means, even though the environment is bad, lotuses can still grow beautifully. If students can understand the meaning of growing lotuses more in depth, then they can learn more about life. Throughout the program, we've seen the progress of Tsiji volunteers work with local Haitian volunteers to help Haiti stand on its own again. The dream of this goal to becoming a reality seems far away, but with everyone's combined efforts, we are moving towards it. I hope you enjoyed our show today. I'm Ginger Chang, and I'll see you soon.